Well, good morning. I'm back down on the estate lake this morning. I'm talking quite quietly because there's quite a few other anglers down here. The reason I've come back is in my last video when you saw me on the opposite bank float fishing paste, things have got a little bit tougher. A lot of anglers have come down, fished the paste on the float and done really well. Others that are probably looking at that video for the first time are coming down and really struggling and there's a reason for that and the tench have changed their feeding habits and behaviour and it's typical with all tench. Early season what you'll find is before spawning they're going to be feeding up, building up reserves so big baits such as paste and worm kebab work really well but then once they've spawned or straight after spawning they'll still be feeding like that because obviously they will still be building up from the spawning um, activities. They, um, they slowly just uh, go back into a very sedate way of feeding and tench can be really really difficult to catch later on in the season and I came back a couple of weeks Sundays ago with my mate and we'd had a couple of tough times on the bank and we just thought oh where can we go just get a bend in our rods get our angling fixed oh we'd go to Stockbridge we came down here I fished the far bank I fished for three and a half hours on the float on the paste and I never got a bite whereas early season as you saw 20 tench, 20 plus tench was easily achievable and what we noticed was a lot of fish were feeding or rolling out in the middle of the lake and I think what they've done is we're early season where all the natural food from the lilies in the margins is in abundance they come into the margins they feed up on that but then when they just go back into their sort of sedate feeding habits they move out into the siltier area into the deeper water and probably feed on things like bloodworm and to actually catch these tench is quite difficult but i've been down since that sunday played about with things and i think i've come up with the solution so i'll run through the rigs the bait later in the video but what i'm going to do is get my rod out there and start catching a few tench hopefully Okay, well let's just run through the tackle I'm using today. I've got an 11 foot Preston Carbon Active C-Series feeder rod. Um, discontinued now, I've had this for years. Again, a beautiful rod, one that I should use a lot more often. As I say, these small rods are great for fishing under these trees and for these smaller venues. I've got a little Shimano 2500 on there, which I use for all my kind of cruise and fishing and my Godalming waters and quite a lot of kind of like um, smaller venue feeder fishing. It's loaded with eight pound Black Magic, um, Browning Black Magic line again, very low diameter line. But one thing I will mention on this that I've noticed is when you actually tie your feeder and tie your knots, you really need to check your knots because I've had a few problems with the knot strength. So um, don't just tie on there, cast out because you might have might have a few problems. I don't know if it's the line just getting a bit old, but I have noticed it's got a coating on and sometimes tying the knot, I think, breaks that coating. So you really need to, you know, make sure you dampen down those knots, make sure they bed down and test them. So um, just running down, I've got a 0.75 gram flatbed feeder, Preston again, and 
on the business end, I've got one of the little adapters that go into the feeder. Now, be very careful on some of the fisheries because you need to make sure, especially again on the Godamine waters, that you're free running. Now, I think that's free running, but there is a little bit of tension there and that might get you in trouble. You might get a slap, slap wrist or, or something, you know, maybe worse. So on the Farnham waters, that's fine. Sometimes I put a little float stop there to create a bolt rig, um, but there's enough resistance there to, to create that anyway. And then we're down to about a three inch hook link that's made of the Reflo 514 again, down to a size 16 micro barbed super specialist Drennan. You are allowed to use 16, 18s and smaller we were micro barbed on Farnham waters. Um, the old rules were barbless completely, but that's been changed this year. Um, and I would much rather use a size 16 with a micro barb than a barbless 14, just for that little bit of security that when I've actually hooked a fish, I, uh, you know, it just stays in a little bit easier, but the tiny little micro barb comes out easy enough. And what I found the best bait is a little bit of enterprise buoyant caster and what you find is that just sits up nicely like a snowman rig um, that's what I found is the best bait sometimes as I say the Dura pellets work um, sometimes a little bit of um, buoyant corn work so pretty basic stuff and I'm just using one of these little feeder um, moulds for the feeder the only drawback here I find is when you press it down you do kink your hook link so I'm going to have a look into some other types of molds because the last thing I want is you can see that tiny little kink there does it make a difference it does to my confidence so uh, I am going to look for some different molds and all you do is you just fill it up press it down put your bait and the hook link in first press it down and you've got that nice little parcel of bait where the tench home in on and suck it all up and away it goes and you're into your tent. So um, tackle, fairly, fairly robust. I'll say I've got loads of fizzing out there, but why I really came on a day like today because there's hardly any clouds in the sky. It's boiling hot, late August, not good for tench this time of year, let alone on probably one of the hardest day. But I've had a few fish and which I'll show you later. So uh, I'm gonna get it out, try and get a couple more before I go home, but everybody around this lake is really struggling. There's a guy fishing the float on the far bank in the swim that I had all those fish in. I think I've seen him land two fish. He was here before me. Guy in the corners, two rods on feeders. He's had one. Another gentleman to my right here. He's had a couple of tench. So um, I've had a few more than that, but not many, I must admit. I think I've had uh, seven fish in total this morning so uh, I'm going to keep going try and get a couple more probably give it another hour but I'm having a strip off because it is so so hot so let's get it out there and see if we can get a couple more run through the bait I'm using today. I'm using the flatbed feeder. Now a lot of the match anglers refer to this as the method which I get a bit confused because the method to me is an inline lead. Loads and loads of kind of ground bait or pellet round, scalded pellet etc. It's old school but obviously these have come very very popular and the match anglers refer to them as the method. For me, it's a flatbed feeder. And what I'm actually using is a mold that goes with this. They're both by Preston. And I'm just putting some two mil swim stim red krill dynamite pellets in there. These are dampened down when I get here. You've got to do it a few times to get the right consistency. If they're still too dry, they kind of break up on the cast or within the feeder. So it takes a bit of time to get those right. And then on the hook bait, this is the important part. Now, fishing over on the Godalming waters, the swim stem Dura pellets have been catching me loads and loads of fish, either the Sweet F1s or the Red Krill. These are six mil. The reason I've been using those and not the plastic over there is basically the small fish. If I'm using small bits of corn or plastic maggot over there, I'm getting attacked by small rud. 
especially and also if I'm using the ground bait. So I've started using the pellets because that seems to get down to the bottom, doesn't attract all those silver fish. As I say here, I'm at Stockbridge today, it's run by Farnham Angling Society, it's an estate lake, it's completely different. But tench a tench, they still love the sweet F1. But what I found out here was I started using those because I got full of confidence on those. And I'd catch a couple, but I had loads and loads of fizzing going on out in the swim. As soon as that, that flatbed or method feeder hit bottom, there was loads and fumes and kind of like bubbles coming up as the tench were getting their heads down. And I'm sitting there thinking, I must, you know, I, I should be getting more bites. And although I caught a few on these, I started to experiment and I went through the plastic corn again. I have great success on that for the cruising carpet, Enton and Harris, soaked in sort of maple syrup. And I just couldn't get a bite on that here. The, the Dura pellets would catch me a few, but I thought there must be a better bait. And I went through different colored pellets, different kind of um, lengths of hook links, etc., etc. And in the end, just by chance, I just got a plastic caster, caster colored, same color sort of thing as these krill pellets, put it on, cast it out. And as the, as the feeder was actually dropping through the water, off it went and I was into a first tench. And I haven't really looked back, you know, since that day on this venue. So my go-to here is a plastic caster, soaked in maple syrup and just simply hair rigged it. The knot on the actual hair just holds the actual plastic caster on there. And that's how the tent seemed to want it. I'll show you how it looks in a clear bowl of water, but basically it's like a snowman rig. The hook lays flat on the bottom and the caster just sits up. So the tents are coming in, they're mopping up that pellet. And what I found here is you're not getting instant bites. You're having to wait quite a long time. They come in, they're mopping up and sucking up that pellet. And then all of a sudden there's probably just a little caster just wafting about there and they come in have a look obviously they have no hands so they have to test it with the mouth and straight away so I think sometimes the more you work it down here at Stockbridge with these two mil pellets you get them fizzing and you get them pre opt so although that gets them into your swim don't be in too much hurry to keep casting because that might work against you just give them sort of 10 minutes and um, the bite should come steadily Well, one question I get asked quite often, it might seem really simple to a lot of the speci anglers out there and the match anglers, but it is a simple question of how do you actually present a plastic caster to the fish on your rig? And what you do is you tie up your short hook link. In this case, it's about three inches. As I said, it's 514 ref low size 16 micro barb super specialist and as you can see just here there's a small hair i've tied and it's got a knot on there and what i actually do is i just get my plastic caster sharp baiting needle now be really careful You've got to be careful doing it this because it's a little bit unnatural to how i would normally do it push that onto your baiting needle and then simply attach your hook link and pull your caster onto the hair. And what happens there is once it's on there, you can see it's tight to the hook. What I just do is I just pull it back a little bit and the knot on the hair secures the caster. Yeah, they come off now and again. Normally they come off when they go in the landing net and the mesh gets caught. But if you've got a float stop on there, you can break your hook link. And if you haven't, then the caster simply comes off and you can normally find it floating in your landing net. And then you get your loop that you've made on the other end Attach that, not so easy when you're trying to do it a camera, onto that little connector, push it all back together 
and then what you've got if that pushes into your feeder like so there's your little caster that actually sits up like a snowman rig on front or on top of your smaller mound of pellets which you present on the actual flatbed or method feeder and as you can see on this rig I've got a little float stop there about an inch back that just creates a bulk rig so when a fish comes in picks the caster up lifts it just slides it that creates a bulk rig but then that just pulls the hook home even more so fairly simple but yeah to mount your your caster I've seen people just directly putting them on the hook because they you know they haven't been shown how to do that but there you are sharp bait and needle plastic caster you can experiment with colours red white dark brown in this case I'm just matching the hatch by uh, trying to use a colour as close to the pellets I'm using so it is as simple as that so a question a lot of people ask me as well is you know when do you know your pellets are of the right consistency and that really comes with trial and error when I get to the, the lake the first thing I do is I just pour half a bag of pellets into a container I add some a little bit of water from the lake um, I mix them up and then start getting tackled up and then from time to time just use one of these sprays that you get from the garden centre and you know it just adds a little bit of water from time to time you will find they will dry out as the day goes on especially if it was a day like today really hot and normally you get to the stage where as you can see I've just squeezed those together and actually to present and produce that little packet of bait place your caster and your hook into the mould add some of your pellets now the key is not to overdo this turn your feeder over place it on top and simply press down now I'm going to remove this very quickly because squeeze down press down on the back of these feeders you'll see is a little presser and that releases it and as you can see there you've got your little package flatbed feeder method feeder full of pellets and on top is your bait and as they break down in the water your bait will just stick sit up on top it might move away if you're using something like a stiffer fluorocarbon but in general the fish come in that starts breaking down they start sucking everything up and your hook bait is bang there in the middle of that those three bees and all you get is your rod tip lifting out the water line tightening and the fish has been hooked and self hooked no striking involved just lift the rod and you're away something I find quite amazing is how few people actually look at how their hook bait is working or acting when it's actually in the lake now I don't know if you can see that exactly but you can see there the caster is just in the water and it's really critically balanced the actual weight the caster is trying to come up and float because it's buoyant but the eye of the hook and the weight of the hook is actually pulling it down and it's actually just balancing there on the eye of the hook so when a tench comes along sucks up the pellets what that bait is going to do is come up and fly up into the tench cruising carp carp's mouth the tench or whatever fish it is is then going to think well I want those two mil pellets but what's that in my mouth blow it out and that's when that hook quite often turns and gets set in the bottom lip and another thing is I'm just going to take that out I'm going to load this feeder up is what you need to know is how long it takes for the feeder to actually dissolve and break down and where your hook bait is because that tells you how long you've got to cast out for the bait and the pile of um, the little package of bait 
to hit the bottom and for you to tighten that line without moving the feeder. So there we go. There we go. It breaks down pretty quick. And I mean within seconds. So you cast that out and it's almost broken down by the time it's hit the bottom. I was fishing in about 10, 12 foot of water today and that actually surprises me. So uh, you really need to um, pack those pellets on big time pretty hard. The harder and tighter you pack them on, obviously the longer it's going to be. But when that goes down and hits the bottom, you don't want to be moving that feeder. And as you can see, the caster is just sitting there on the outskirts of that lovely little package of bait and a tench carp, cruising carp, whatever is going to come along, suck that up and hopefully that little bait there, as you can see, it's trying to fly up, it's going to fly up into that fish's mouth and the rest is history. Well, one thing you'll notice which will maybe look slightly strange to some people is that I'm, even though I'm fishing a quiver tip, I've actually point in the rod straight at where I'm casting and what I'm actually doing is I'm putting the tip just an inch of the tip the little last inch of red tip of that quiver tip under the water and when you get a bite the rod tip or the just lifts up out the water it just comes out of the water tightens up and you're into the fish and fishing this swim I've got two kind of floating islands left and right which I'm fishing right in between so what that enables me to do is because I've got my clutch set, the, the rod tip just comes up, fish on, and it just kites left or right, missing those floating islands. I'm also picked this swim because it's away from the lilies. Uh, I've got lilies in the swim to my right, lilies to my left. I've had one of the tents actually go in that, um, managed to get it out, but sometimes they know where the, uh, the snags are, the lilies all the cables coming down from those floating islands. So yeah, it's something I saw Andy Finlay's do. I think it's Andy Finlay, Preston many, many years ago, fishing up against an island. And all it was was the tip just came out of the water, fish kiting left and right, and he was into a fish. So the days of actually putting your rod out at right angle, I still do it now and again, but I don't put a massive angle in there. I just put it out to the side, watch that tip just goes round. But in this case, I'm just watching it come up and lift up. I'm just hoping it's going to do it a couple more times before I go home. I'm only going to give it another hour because it is so, so hot now. And, um, you know, even though I've got some fizzing going on out there and the odd fish rolling, um, they're not really having it. So um, I'll be lucky if I get another bite or two. Well, as I was just describing, the rod tip just came up, lifted out the water. And I wasn't expecting to get any more, but I've managed to, to get another one, only a little one. Uh, in the heat of the day when everybody else is really struggling, just goes to show that if you look at your presentation, that caster, how it sits in the water, can catch you more fish than other people. So I'm going to put this one in the net. I'm going to call it a day now. Tough one, but nailed right in the bottom lip proves your rig's working only a small fish but it was nice to get one right at midday or not quite midday now i didn't start till seven so i fished longer than i was expecting but in these conditions i was expecting to catch a lot more so uh yeah not too sure how many I've got now. I think I've got eight, so I'll get those out. I'll quickly show you the sort of stamp. They have been quite small, no brown goldfish today. But uh, even on a day like today, when uh, you've got a few hours, I don't get much time at the moment to get out and fish, but the lady of the house was going to water aerobics. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna get up. I'm not gonna get here too early get up mega early quite often in the week at like four o'clock start so I uh, had a bit of a laying got set the alarm for six got down here for seven probably fishing for about I don't know half past seven it's coming up to midday now 
and um, yeah, eight tench in the net when I think the most anybody else I've seen catch is two. So uh, yeah, got to be pleased with that. Well, there you have it. Tough morning on the Estate Lake, Stockbridge Lake, beautiful lake down here, run by Farnham Angling Society. The tench might not be the biggest, but they feed on boiling hot days, which is absolutely fantastic. As I say, I was hoping to catch a lot, lot more, but when the weather's so, so warm, not a cloud in the sky, we're probably in the mid twenties, I would say, there's not a lot of wind, if any. Um, so it was always gonna be a tough day, but you've got to grab a few hours when you can. And there we have it, eight lovely estate lake tench, all caught on the feeder, on the flatbed, and on plastic as well.